Boy, time does fly, doesn't it? We're almost halfway through the decade. 2024 is here. And 2024 is the year that I would love to get together and do a lot of collaborations with some of the Fight Night Champion YouTubers here. I would love to work with some of the other YouTubers in this community before I ride off into the sunset and gracefully retire from Fight Night Champion after I complete my journey of going 100-0 against the Fight Night Champion Top 100. A lot of you in my comments have given me suggestions of other YouTubers that I should face off against. Most of them are good suggestions, some others not so much. However, I do have my own personal list of people that I would love to face off with in the near future as we approach what I hope to be the last year of Fight Night Champion before EA announces a new game. Simply put, I want to run the gauntlet. So if you see your name on this sheet of paper, just know that Sniper is coming for y'all. With that said, I have a huge bone to pick with the Fight Night Champion community. After putting Fight Night on my back and producing the best content that this scene has ever witnessed, I still feel like I don't get the proper respect or the just do that I think I deserve. Instead of being revered for the trailblazer that I am, I'm always constantly ridiculed and insulted at every turn. There's always people commenting on various social media platforms like Reddit, Facebook, etc, etc, lying on my name, saying that they've knocked LX Sniper or they've made me rage quit, etc, etc, which is all bullshit and all cap. Instead of speaking the truth on my name, people continue to lie on it. And it's not the lies that piss me off the most. What really grinds my gears is when other notable names and other YouTuber content creators in this space find out that they got their ass whooped by me, they get dead silent and pretend that I didn't digitally eviscerate them to humiliation. And that has to change. I'm here to fucking change it. Whenever they get that DM from me that they got LX sniped, nine times out of 10, I'm met with crying and excuses. Followed up with them giving me that men in black treat, acting as if it never happened at all. Thank God I always keep the seats. Cause if I didn't, there will be no dialogue at all of the truth and the facts. Cause I'm not about to let y'all get away with this nonsense anymore. To, to quote a certain tribal chief, you bitch ass niggas in this fight night champion community are gonna acknowledge me. Which brings me to the culprit in this video, the number one ranked fighter, 2021. At the time of this recording, he has a 1,608 and 482 record. And as I said, he is the number one ranked fighter at the top of the leaderboards. And he also is a Fight Night Champion content creator with the channel name 2020 Made Me a Gamer. Well, the stone cold truth about it is, is he needs to change his name. He needs to change his name from 2020 made me a gamer to LX Sniper made me a quitter because that's exactly what happened when he faced me during our ranked match and no he hasn't said a peep about it since and he's known about this ass whooping for quite some time which is why I'm uploading this video myself since he doesn't want to talk about it since he's trying to pretend like it never happened apparently this 2020 guy uploads fight night tutorial videos and highlight reels with a decent following of 1.12k subscribers and 
Anyone who makes Fight Night Champion content knows how difficult it is to get that first 1,000 subs making videos on a near decade and a half old video game. So I salute anyone who's able to reach that milestone because I know better from first-hand experience that that shit is not easy. However, after watching some of his videos on my channel, I can officially state that these videos are garbage and misleading to the community. I feel bad for all of the 1.12 thousand people who have taken his tips to heart because in a nutshell, it's just a load of crap. If you want real fight night tips and tricks to elevate your gameplay, I suggest watching Daquan Djibouti. His videos are no doubt the best out there if you want to improve in fight night champion, especially if you're in the OWC scene. As I mentioned before, 2020 Made Me A Gamer's YouTube channel is nothing but all cap and a bunch of fluff and hours and hours of misleading bullshit. And I'm going to prove it by doing a full channel breakdown of this guy's nonsense. So let's start with the most recent video on his channel, Crazy Rounds in January. He starts off the video against an opponent with a terrible record, which it's easy to make content out of because they fucking suck at the game, obviously. I 100% guarantee you if it were me doing this, I would get criticized to hell and back for beating up lesser ranked opposition. But I get it, you all hold me to a higher standard, which in a lot of times seem impossible to reach because you people don't want to fucking give me a fair shake, but I digress. I'm disappointed that 2020 made me a gamer didn't include our fight in your little old highlight reel because when we fought, I had a terrible record too, quote unquote, with a 461 and 746 win loss record with my Miguel Cotto when we went to battle. Now, you can see here in this Ray Robinson rear match that he's doing some decent combination punching against his opponent, but that's to be expected against F minus opposition. And look here against this Pacquiao player. You can see here he's doing this little hook spam combo technique to knock out his opponent, relentlessly spamming the A and B button like he's playing one of them OG track and field games on Nintendo or PS1. Against this Sugar Ray player, he's hook spamming in round one like his life depends on it. And if you look at his stamina meter, he's draining himself empty, which is a terrible habit to do this early in the fight. And you can see here, he does the hook spam garbage again later against an unsuspecting Ricardo Alvarez player. For the viewer watching, please make a mental note of this technique that he's doing as I'm going to come back to it later to explain why that bullshit does not work on someone with skill. And the rest of the video is him teabagging and making other bad players rage quit as he tries to make himself look good against much weaker opposition. But ironically enough, he wouldn't dare upload the video of me making him rage quit and him crying like a bitch in the DM. All that clinch spamming and you still got knocked out. What a bum. All you did was flail your arms around like a goddamn fool. Clinch and then rage quit. Worst fight night champion scrub I've ever seen. Me versus the fucking RT bun. All you did was shield and run. No, all you did was shield and run after your spam power shots missed the mark all fight. You couldn't even keep me off of you. The blocking was caring. Gee! Say what you want, but you got dominated for the majority of the fight. And had you not rage quit, I would have knocked you out cold. Because you're playing garbage. You never dodged anything. If I missed, it wasn't a miss you called. Excuses. Make all the excuses you want to. But at the end of the day, I made you rage quit. The black mechanic is too far off currently. The RT button made me quit. Why am I fighting a force field? Take that up with EA, not me, crybaby bomb. No step back, no side step, no head movement. You didn't do shit literally but black umbrella. Yeah. You didn't do nothing literally but clinch, and look where that got you. Will he get up from this? 
you got knocked on your ass and even something worse than that. Not only did you get knocked on your ass, you also got sniped. Congratulations. You'll be in a future video soon, you and all the clinch spamming. How dare you mislead the community with your garbage tips and you can't even take your ass whooping like a true pro. Nigga, all you did was flop it fast, go on! That's what you get for coming guns blazing at me in the first round. Not my fault you can't swim in that deep water and mismanage your stamina. I did all the watching, Sam. I hope you change the name of your tactics, let's one and upload this fight to your little garbage channel. Because the facts are the facts. And the fact is that I made you rage quit. You don't have to use stamina. If you are a kid, you can't beat the RT spot, but it's in your favor. Literally me versus the right trigger. Shit's boring. One punch block and run, I'll fight. Like, come on, bro. That shit's lame. You're supposed to be the teacher and work around whichever is bothering you. All you could come up with was clinching me non-stop. Like I said, you're in no position to teach anyone how to play Fight Night Champion with garbage skills like that. You can't break C. You don't have to block no. You blame the gang. Blame the blocking, blame the punching, and blame everyone but yourself. But yourself, but yourself, but yourself. It's time for you to realize that number one, you suck at Fight Night Champion. Number two, your YouTube channel is all cap. Look forward to me posting this fight on my channel soon. Stay tuned. Let's take a look here in this next garbage video of his, where he's talking about the science of getting in and getting out. Again, I need to reiterate that he's recording these videos against bums at best in a pathetic attempt to make himself look better than he really is. Here he talks about his opponent forcing him to switch his strategy up, and then he follows up with a good mixture of combination punching and establishing distance, which is exactly what you want to do. But during a fight against someone with high level skills such as myself, his adjustment was to stay on retreat mode spam the straight right hand and clinch me through the whole goddamn fight and i'm not joking look the number one ranked fighter in the world 2020 made me a gamer literally clinched me 44 times during our bout before i forced him to rage quit i am not lying if i had to rate his skill level it would be about a 56 overall because he had no typical skill outside of that he's fucking garbage but I will admit that his clinching rating should be at a 99 because he had some elite level clinch and I'll give him that because I've never been clinched this many times in the 13 years that I've been playing Fight Night Champion. All of that nonsense that you uploaded on your channel, the one video that you should make ain't there. How to be a clinch spammer in Fight Night because when it comes to hugging another man and how to be a flaming and in the ring you're absolutely elite in that category and then in that video he later on thanks his audience for reaching the 1k subscriber milestone which again I salute him for but then he mentions that he's trying to help the people who play fight night appreciate you guys I'm at a thousand subs never thought that would happen uh, just trying to help the people who play this game help the people who play this game help the you can help the Fight Night community by being honest with your audience and telling them the truth. That truth being that you're a rage quitting crybaby bitch who can't take an L in a video game just like the rest of the clowns in the top 100. So let's look at this next video right here that he's got called Defense is Fun in Fight Night Champion, which is funny to me because it's here where he exposes himself for being the biggest hypocrite in the world. As you can see, he's using some impressive head movement and counter punching against the opposing player. But again, you can tell that this highlight was against lesser level opposition who didn't know any better. Because anyone with a modicum of sense would have known to attack the body when you over there trying to look cute with your bobbing and weaving. Right here is just hilarious to me that he wants to highlight the CPU Tyson clinching him when he literally clinched me 44 times. <laughs> oh, the irony. The hypocrisy and the delusion of this dude is unreal. 
how on earth can you upload a video called defense is fun but then be in my dms crying and complaining about my defense make it make sense you need to retitle that video defense is fun when it works in my favor because that's really what you're saying let's take a look at the next video on his channel beginner offensive guide well I can assure you that it was definitely made and created by a beginner. He's here talking about the effectiveness of the 1-2 or the jab straight combo, which in itself isn't a bad idea. It's one of the most basic combos in boxing. But he doesn't go over any variations or any solutions to what will happen if someone is countering your 1-2. A good opponent will sidestep uppercut that shit every single time. And looking at his comments, the silencer is spot on with his statement saying that 2020 gamers, or whatever the fuck you call them, his advice is a good way to drain your stamina early, which is exactly what happened when this bum tried that bullshit in the first round against me in our fight. He came out guns a-blazing only to run out of ammo when it was time to swim in that deep water. Like I told you in your own comment section, you fight like a beginner yourself and you're steering your audience down the wrong path if they want to learn how to get better at fight night. Simply putting it, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, bum. This entire video is 55 seconds full of bad advice for newcomers. It's no wonder why you conveniently glazed over my post and pretended what I said wasn't the truth. And to this Jason dude in the comments, shut the fuck up, because I'd have you choking harder than you choke on your dick, you pussy. Again, I want to reiterate this further. If you want real Fight Night Champion tips and tricks, please go watch Daquan Djibouti's videos for in-depth, intuitive advice and practical advice on how to get better at Fight Night Champion. Or... You can just watch a digital martial arts savant like myself go to work. Let's look at this next video on this clown's channel called Fight Night Champion Combo Guide, where he goes over different variations of combination punching that you can do in the game. And personally speaking, the fact that this video has almost 5,000 views signifies a huge problem that's not just prevalent in Fight Night Champion, but in fighting games overall. See, let me explain. Whenever someone picks up a fighting game, the first thing people want to do is start learning combos. And I get it. Combos are flashy, they look cool, and if performed right, they can do a ton of damage. But prioritizing combos when learning a new game is like trying to go from point A to point Z without learning everything in between. So many people don't understand that you have to have a mastery of the fundamentals first and the mechanics of the game second before you can even think about learning how to do combos. I see this mistake amongst so many people that it's quite disgusting. It leads to this tunnel vision mentality where people believe that combos equals skill and nothing else matters. That is a scrub way of thinking because there's a lot more nuance to skill than just being able to perform a sexy combo in a fighting game. But the video that he uploaded is actually a decent video for those who are looking for creative ways to string together punches. But again, he's leading the viewers down a path that can and will lead to failure. Because while these combos can be effective on trash opponents, it doesn't mean shit if the punches aren't landing, especially in a boxing game where stamina management has to be taken into consideration. Now, remember when I said I was mentioning the infinite hook cheese garbage? Well, he actually showcases it in this combo guide. Once again, misleading poor newcomers who decide to listen to him down the wrong path. Cause to simply put it, that shit don't work. Watch as he tries it on me, after I get stunned at the end of the first round. By utilizing proper precision blocking and tactical head movement, I was able to survive to the bell and avoid a potential knockdown. He again tries this hook cheese in the sixth round when he stuns me, but watch how I counter this garbage by simply blocking, leaning back, throwing a counter straight to the body, and immediately pushing him off of me 
as he threw a string of four unsuccessful punches, which took a huge hit on his long-term stamina. 2020 made me a gamer? I can't stress enough how terrible your stamina management is and how terrible you overall skill is. And for a number one ranked fighter, this is quite pathetic. To call yourself a content creator and be this dense is unacceptable. And then to top it off, you're a quitter and a crybaby. You know, in order to be a teacher of the game, you need to be a student first. And clearly, you haven't watched enough of Daquan Djibouti's videos to understand what clinching does to your stamina bar. He's got to earn it. He has to earn it with skill, with combos, power punching, hooks, uppercuts, but because they can't just sit there and sidestep uppercut the shit out of you when you're standing there blocking. It doesn't work. They're going to gas out. And the only want to let them gas out and make them knock us out, make him and just make him knock you out and you're going to be able to get your perfect block going and this will act, transfer exactly like this online and what you want to do is at when he's getting tired after he misses a big shot or you land a big shot or you land like a three punch combo like a clean one if you clinch him most times it'll take a little bit of stamina off of both of you this is a dirty dirty trick and i've actually had people complain in the past that you watch as this clip coming up we take a little bit of a stamina off we don't want to clinch more than once not twice in a row not more than once you know once and then box a little bit and then he misses a shot then you clinch him again but do it maybe three three times max per round if you repeatedly clinch in a row you will uh, gas yourself out gas yourself out gas yourself out because in fight night the more you clinch the more stamina you lose with every clinch. Yet you clinched me 44 fucking times before you went crying back to the Xbox dashboard. And he's got some other OWC videos that I don't have time to cover, but it's safe to assume that they're garbage like the rest of his content. Like I said earlier, you need to change your name from 2020 made me a gamer to 2020 made me a crybaby or 2020 made me a bitch, or preferably LX made me a quitter because you've been caught red-handed, live and in 4K. While I respect your efforts to making fight night videos because I truly do believe the more the merrier, your overall content is a net negative for the community, which is why I had no problem reporting you to Microsoft for rage quitting and using profanity in the DMs because you deserve it, because your behavior is unacceptable, especially for someone who's supposed to be the top dog on the leaderboards. Listen up, kid. If you want to restore your credibility in the fight night community, I'm going to need you to do these three things. One, you need to apologize to LX Sniper and explain to everybody on YouTube what happened when LX Sniper kicked your ass. Number two, I want you to apologize to me for rage quitting and acting like a petulant child in my DMs. And number three, oh yeah, there's a third one. I want you to acknowledge LX Sniper as the greatest fight night player of all time and the greatest fight night player that's ever been in your presence. Or else, there's gonna be consequences. Because if I don't hear anything from you within the next seven to 14 business days, I'm gonna chop that right on off. And send it to you in the mail, first class, express. So you better pay up. You better own up to your bullshit. Because what you're about to see now is a difference between someone who eliminates all number one ranked fighters on a daily. You're about to see the difference between someone who dominates number one ranked competition versus a fake YouTuber who uploads his content on beating up bars. 
Yeah, you're about to see that difference. And you're also going to understand clearly why the L in LX stands for what it stands for. LX stands for a league. And I'm in a league of my own. In fact, I'm in a league of excellence. And there's nothing that you can do to take that away. So I want you to sit there and enjoy this footage of me kicking your ass in Fight Night Champion and making you a notch on my belt as I go 100 and 0 against the Fight Night Champion. Top 100. tonight both fighters say they are primed coming off a very intense and passionate training camp Fresh on you, but he's going to be smart about it, not reckless and careful, and he's going to bang you down to the face. Zoning in on that gut combination punch downstairs. Good effective work with that straight right hand. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. Teddy, what do you look for early on when you're analyzing a fight of two power punchers facing off against each other that gives you a clue as to which way this is going? Who's doing the little things a little bit better? Who's using the jab? Who's controlling range? Hey, who's thinking better? Body shot lands with the right. That is exactly what the corner wanted to see. A good combination punch by Julio Cesar Chavez. Combination punching is working well here. There's that overhand right. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Miguel Cotto's got to do a better job. He is getting rocked. Oh! here not just to tell them to go out there and move your head but whether or not they should stop this fight how about that by miguel cotto stunned and now fighting back he recovered well good double jab by miguel cotto watch that punch cotto's offense has completely gone away here it seems he was hurt earlier and now all he's doing is worried about what could be coming to get him again. Yeah, he was on the highway earlier going about 90. And now all of a sudden he's taking those back roads going about 20. How long until the police catch up to him or his opponent pulls him over? Well, you 
could see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot. And a well-placed combination by Julio Cesar Chavez. Halfway through this round here. Good scoring shot. It was a straight right. Good, solid right hand land. Oh, Teddy, he is hurt, but he's trying to throw back. Yeah, you better keep that same energy, clown. All that running away that you're doing. It's a fucking digital video game and you over here fighting with fear. Running and spamming, running and spamming, running and spamming. Well, the tides have turned, boy. Because I'm finna be doing all the running now. I got the lead. Ain't shit you can do about it, but take it. Hopefully you'll be a man and get up and actually get up and try to fight like one instead of fighting like a little bitch. Six. Trying to buy a little time. He's not worried about winning this round right now. He just wants to get himself right so he can win other rounds. And he can be around. He needs to improve the accuracy a little bit. That was comical by Julio Cesar Chavez. Eight. Now he ties up there. Keep moving. Keep moving. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Nine. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Ten. Another clinch. Chavez obviously overall hundreds plus wins, multi-time world champion. But for a lot of mainstream sports fans, when you mention Julio Cesar Chavez, the one thing that sticks out to them is that 1990 controversial finish against Meldrick Taylor. Ted. A lot of people thought he was getting outpointed, he was getting beat. But the thing I think about is that he could throw back to that. And that was a 12-round fight. A 15-round fight would have suited him better because he would have broke down Taylor and he was starting to break him down. 11. Last well. seconds of round number three. Are you gonna let your hands go? You have to. You have to be busy. This, this guy is beating the shit at you. You have to throw three or four punches in a row. You can turn this around, but you gotta let it go. Round number four is underway as we look at Teddy's scorecard. You can see what a difference the knockdown can make. Toto's fans have to be loving this. 13. Early. Yeah, with that power, you know, he can make a mistake and he can win the fight. His opponent can't afford any mistakes. 14. And not any more mistakes. And you made the point a few times that, hey, it's nice 15. to have something where you got the superior advantage. In this case, he's got the speed. But you can't fall in love with it too much. 16. No, because what happens then, you're like a teenager that gets one of those sports cars. You know, he gets carried away. He 17. He respect the speed yet. And he starts to run red lights. He starts to do things that he should not do. And that's what's happening here. He's starting to jump in with those quick hands. He figures he doesn't have to respect the dimensions other guys have to. And when he's jumping in, he might 19. get There might be a cop there or a punch there to nail him. 
20. And he just holds on there. Halfway through round number four. Chavez's opponent landing an effective counter punch right there. Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. Good clean shot returning fire. Well done by 21. Cotto. 22. Gages in the clinch. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Combo lands to the head. Takes one, gives one. The right hand scores well. 23. Well, that was his intention. 24. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. And now you see him scoring well with the right. Job. Well, he got caught by a lucky punch in that last round. It did do some damage, but now you can tell he's right back where he wants to be, fresh and ready as we start. I don't take lightly when a guy gets stopped, but you know what? I think he was more biased yeah, than he was hurt. Good work. Missed the body shot. Chavez has got to deal with a cut cheek. <sighs> Uh, you can just tell that he's lacking that jab there. He just hasn't committed to throwing it at all. I mean, that's the most basic thing in the world is to use that jab. That jab does so many things for you. It keeps the guy 25. In and obviously it sets up the offense. 26. Not much action as he just ties up. Accuracy an issue there. Didn't land that straight right hand. 27. And here he goes again with the clinching. 28. And he clinches yet again. 29. Well, this can become a bore, and he's making a decision to do it as he ties up again. Halfway into round number five here. 30. And now looking to hang on. Punch! Punch! Keep moving around and 31. Just an excessive amount of holding here. Just much too much clinching. Huge uppercut from Cotto. 32. Clinching his opponent. Nobody likes to see 33. that. 33. And he decides to tie up again. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. <gasps> Unable 34. to Miguel Cotto. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. There you go. 35. I don't know, Teddy. It just feels like one of those nights. One of those fights where somebody's getting fight hurt. Now. Where this is not going. So at the start of this round, we've reached the halfway point. Be interesting to see what we're in store for down the stretch of this fight. And he's holding. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. 37. Just hugging there. 38. This is excessive holding we're seeing. 39. Here. And he's just not engaging in the fight. He clinches again. Chavez has got to figure out a way to do something different here. I mean, I know he's committed to being a counterpuncher, but right now he's giving rounds away. Yeah, he is because he's waiting for 40. things to happen. That are not happening. You know, he's he's laying back, he's waiting for the guy to walk in. See, to be a good counterpuncher, an effective counterpuncher, the guy has to come close to you. But his opponent is staying at a distance. He's not giving him any counter. Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Oh, that's good stuff. Fire it right back with one of his own. Good work by Miguel Cotto. Oh, keep your feet moving. Now 
it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. Working our way towards the bell. Last 10 seconds of the sixth. Commits to the straight right. And round six comes to an end. Okay. Toto's defense. It's like a whole new fighter out there. Look at him as we start this round. Remember what happened to him in the last round. Now, he's up on his toes. Yeah, well, remember what happened to him in the last round. That's what we say, but he doesn't say that. He's putting that out. He's putting it into the rear view mirror. He's going forward down the road with a lot of hope, a lot of vigor, a lot of confidence. Scored well with that straight left. Toto's doing something that not everybody appreciates, but he is making his defense a major factor. Yeah, well, a lot of times people, you know, they only get it done on one end. What I mean relax, about that is, relax. you know, offensively, they use the draft, they use aggression to set up the offense, but he uses defense to set up the offense. He, he has a double-edged sword. Halfway through the seventh round. And a big uppercut from Chavez. He just missed that shot up top. Keep moving, keep moving. Good right hand. Scorecard, Teddy. It's easy to look at this fight and make a simple piece of analysis. Hey, one guy dominating the other. Much more complex than that. So many pieces of the puzzle had to be put in place in the eight weeks leading up to this fight to get this result at this point in the fight. Yeah, exactly, Joe. I mean, it's like an orchestra. Everything is put together beautifully. You got the wind instruments. You got the percussion instruments. You got the string instruments. 43. Everybody, the cutman, the trainer, the manager. 44. The right people in camp. Everyone has done their job. Oh! Big shot, the left crash. Oh. And he goes down again. Will he get up from this? Yeah, you know what? You got to be the most bitch-made fighter I have ever played against in the history of Fight Night Champion. My God, you are a pussy. And I sincerely mean that. You start off, you clinch me 44 fucking times. 44 times. And then when that didn't work, you started running and spamming, running and spamming. Look what that got you. And then you rage quit. 44 clinches, running and spamming, quit. Dude, and you were supposed to be the number one fighter and you got a YouTube channel? Yeah, if you don't upload this bullshit, you know I will. And I know I'm gonna have to because you're nothing but a bitch. I'm gonna try and pretend like this didn't happen. Well, bitch, this did happen. You're the number one ranked fighter fighting like this. Get that garbage out of here, bitch. My God. 40, 44 fucking clinches. I cannot believe this. Well, either way, you're still getting thrown out like yesterday's garbage. Another number one ranked fighter and easy money for me to make because I'm going to keep exposing pussies like you on the regular. Fuck you and fuck your channel. I'm a motherfucking thug.
a loss is a loss. Even if people get it by underhanded means or spamming or whatever it is, a loss is a loss. You just deal with it. To get away with responsibility, the fact that you lost in an online fighting game match, you have to be the biggest bitch on this planet. And I mean that too. Anyone out there who's ever pulled the plug on a fighting game, you are a fucking bitch. The moment that you do it and you pull that plug, and if you're doing it publicly, that's even worse. You just prove you have no fucking manhood whatsoever. You're a coward. You're a creep. You're a fucking loser. Again, with as many losses as I've taken, as many licks as I've taken, as much as I've sucked at fighting games, and yes, I acknowledge that I get angry and I rage online and I say naughty things, I don't pull the plug because I'm not a bitch.